sing that song, they know I am about to shout at them why they are late. Let's go. Come, let's go and worship God. And, and this is a beautiful song that they sing. Verse 3 says, For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth, the peaks of the mountains are His also. In other words, this song is saying, everything that is in this world belongs to God. Silver and gold that we are chasing, brothers and sisters, belongs to God. Everything that we have belongs to God. And verse 6 says, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. This is the song that they would sing. And, and, and it's, it's a positive song. It's a song that says, let's go and worship God. But, but look at verse 7. Verse 7, there's a twist there. Because this song, you think it's a song of motivation, it's a song of encouragement, but when you read from verse 6, there is a twist there. It says, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your can you see it's moving away from being a positive song, from being hallelujah katenko. It's moving away from that and now it's, it's a warning. He's saying today, if you hear his voice, do not do what? Do not harden your hearts. And, and verse 8, it, it, it's, even, it's even going deeper to warn us. It says, if we harden our hearts, we must be careful that we are not like those people who were at Meribah who hardened their hearts. Who, which people were at Meribah who hardened their hearts? The children of Israel. You remember? After God rescued them from Brother Kiel, the roving mic, my brother, the roving mic, the roving mic. Yes. Yes. If you hear his voice, so the question is, whose voice is it? Does it come with sound, brother Cleo? Does voice come with sound? Of course. Whose voice is it? I believe what the author is saying. It's the voice of God. When God speaks to you, do not harden your heart. Don't be like the children of Israel. After seeing all the good things that God did for them, after seeing God's goodness, when he rescued them from Egypt, and he, he actually parted the Red Sea so that they could cross, shortly after that, what did they do? They started complaining against God, isn't it? They started complaining about water. They started saying, they started complaining even about meat. You remember they wanted meat. They said in Egypt it was good because we had lettuce, we had cucumber, we had fish, we had all these things. They started complaining to God. They said, God, we want to go back to? Egypt. To Egypt. They said, were there no graves in Egypt that you would bring us to the wilderness so that we can die? Was God good to them? He was good to them. But, 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 but every time there was a, a, a small challenge in, a, ahead, every time they encountered difficulties, they forgot about God's goodness and they started remembering the past. Amen? Aren't we like that sometimes, brethren? Is God good to us? Has God been good to you? I mean, there's no church that enjoys God's goodness like Hilltop Church of Christ. Hallelujah. I mean, a year we witness three weddings. Eh? Next year we're going to witness three more. If, if some of you have not decided, maybe it will be more. <laughs> I mean, God is good. Every year we have a childbirth. Do you know the process of childbirth and how risky it is? I'm telling you, God has been good to us here. I mean, look at the parking lot. Has God been good to us? I mean, last week we had a, the headache that we had was that other people had parked behind our cars. Eh? 
I mean, when we started at Hilltop, I, I think there were two cars. Brother Amos did not have a car, she was, he was walking, my, my sister. I mean, God has been good to us. And, and God is saying, you also, you must be aware that you do not harden your hearts. Ne? After he has been so good to you, be careful that you don't harden your heart like those people. I mean, God was so good to the children of Israel. We are told for 40 years, they used none of their shoes wore out. I mean, for 40 years, you are using the same shoes, eh? and they don't wear out. Was that God's goodness? Uh, some of you don't believe it, eh? uh, For 40 years? I mean, I mean, one of you bought me these shoes last year, late last year, but it's beginning to wear out, eh? I mean, that's how good God was to them. But did they thank God for his goodness? Instead of thanking God for his goodness, every time they encountered a new challenge, they started complaining. Are we like that sometimes? Yes. Yeah. You, you just got a job last month, eh? And you have a problem with your boss. You forget about how, go how good God has been, eh? And you start complaining. Be careful that you don't end up like the children of Israel, eh? Listen to what God says about those guys. He says to those about those guys in verse 9, they tested me, they tried me, though they had seen my works. I like verse 10. And verse 10 is very is a very sad verse. He says, For 40 years I loathed that generation. Do you know what is to love? Is to hate. And to love is God is actually saying, for 40 years, I couldn't stand those people. Whew. Is there anybody you can't stand? Anyone that you can't stand? Yeah, maybe some of you. Yeah, I can't stand justice. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, for 40 years, God had to endure their unbelief. God had to endure their doubts. God had to endure their complaining, their murmurings. I don't know how many times they complained against God. And God says, for 40 years, I, I couldn't stand those people. Verse 11. Therefore I saw in my anger, truly they shall not enter into my let me tell you, only two entered into his rest. Ne? Who went to Canaan? Two. From this stubborn generation. Two. Joshua and Caleb. And all those who were 20 years and younger. Those who were 20 years and above, they did not see Canaan. Guess what? Even Moses did not see Canaan. You remember? Yeah. Didn't see Canaan. And so, why is the author of the book of Hebrews drawing parallels between Psalms chapter 95 and what he's about to say? He's actually quoting the same verse to make a point. What does God say about them? Actually, we are told that, that, that so many people died. There were 600,000 men. 600,000 men. We are not counting... Their wives were not counting children. Eh? See, and so it would be how much? Uh, two, two, two point something million people died. Eh? So it means on average you had 40 funerals a week. That's what God did. Does, eh? Yeah, he wiped them away. Because of what? Unbelief. Brethren, be careful that you are not like them. Eh? After God has been so good to us, we have few challenges on our way. What happens? We start doubting God. Ne? Yeah, every time they had a challenge like what? They doubted. Will God, will God take care of us? Eh? And God says, I have done bigger things for you. What is water? I mean, God, God was a very interesting. God he was patient with them. They, 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 they started complaining about meat. And while God has done so much good for them. You remember with the manna from heaven, God gives them manna, but to show that these people were, 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 were people of unbelief, you know what did they do? 
They decided to save manna. They wanted to save manna for tomorrow, ne? Yeah. And what happened to the manna? It got rotten. Why? Because God gave them an instruction. You must have manna for what? For a day, ne? Whatever I give you, finish it. Don't bank. I'm sure they were banking the manna because they didn't believe God is going to provide tomorrow, ne? Are we like that sometimes, ne? Yeah. We lie awake, worrying about what we have because we don't trust that God is going to provide tomorrow. Hallelujah. I, I don't know, it's easy to criticize these people, but I see myself in them. Ne? Yeah, God has been good to me. People have been talking about a 10 year challenge. Brethren, if I can start with you on my 10 year challenge, God has been good to me. Yeah, I was unemployed 10 years ago. Penny was raised by this church. Hallelujah. Mutel was raised by this church. Eh? My wife was raised by this church. Hallelujah. She was educated by this church. Ah, God has been good to me. Brethren, I have, I have cars. Hallelujah. I don't have a car. I have what? Cars. Yeah, can I pray about God? Yeah, I couldn't buy even a single car while I was outside the church. Eh? I was an assistant director. I couldn't buy a car. Today, I have what? I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Yeah. Why? It's God's what? Goodness. There is nothing I have that doesn't come from God. Actually, when I left the, the, the world of work, God made sure that everything I bought with the money of the world of work goes. I remember I managed to buy myself so fast, I ended up selling them. God was saying, let's start afresh. I want to start. Oh, behold, I'm doing a great thing. Behold, I'm doing a new thing for you. But guess what? Like these guys, the Egyptians, the Israelites, Every time when there's a new challenge, I forget about God's goodness. My son nearly died at birth. He's a umbilical cord, you know, a choked him. But he couldn't breathe. And the doctors had to. But guess what? He's alive, right? Eh? Is God good? God is good. My first son nearly died also because the nurses were negligent. Is God good? That's why I call him the pain, the winning victory. Our victory is in our faith, brethren. So the author of Hebrews is quoting that very passage. He says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your, your hearts. When they provoke me, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your forefathers tried me by testing me, and saw my works for 40 years, it's very interesting how he uses 40 years, isn't it? Yeah. He says, for 40 years they did what? They saw my, my works. But in the, in the book of Psalms, what did he say? For 40 years I, I hated them. Isn't it? But here, the author of Hebrews says, for 40 years they saw my... Is it possible that this author is trying to advance a particular point to the audience here? What point do you think he's trying to advance? Remember the purpose of the book. Some of it is to encourage them not to go back. Ne? Is to encourage them not to do it. Not to go back to their past lives. Ne? And so he is using this particular verse. He says for 40 years God did what? God, he says, therefore for 40 years they saw my, my works. Let me tell you something about the book of Hebrews. It was written in AD 66 to 67. That is 40 years after the resurrection of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, those who know mathematics, plus minus there. Ne? It's 40 years after the resurrection of, of Christ. Is he trying to tell them something? That even you, for 40 years, God has been good to you, ne? Firstly, with the resurrection of Jesus, and with all the miracles. You remember there were so many miracles. They were healed, they were given bread, they were, they were, he says, for 40 years, like those people, God has been also good to, to you. Don't go back. To us, it's not even 40 years. I mean, what is it now? 2,000 years ago, eh? 
Jesus died and he, he, he was resurrected to us for more than 2,000 years. God has been good. Ne? So he's saying to you, for 40 years God has been good. Therefore I was angry with this generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts. But why were they hiding in their hearts? They were hiding in their hearts because of what? Unbelief. Ne? Yeah. Do we have areas of unbelief? Do we have areas where we don't believe in God's power? Do we have areas in our lives where we look at our lives and our difficulties and we forget about how, how great God is? I think we all do, ne? Yeah, think about your own area. Some of you, God has taken you from what? Cheating being, hallelujah. <laughs> God has taken you from Nongo. God has taken you from Mapumalanga. Ne? You are here. And guess what? You passed metric. You even passed your degree. But now you have a challenge of getting a job. Ne? And you are starting to doubt whether God can provide. Ne? You are like the children of Egypt. Hallelujah. Of Israel. Some of you, God has been good. He gave you husbands and wives. Ne? Yeah, you have a smaller than a challenge now, ne? Maybe your challenge is what? You don't have man. Maybe your challenge is what? Fatality, ne? And you're starting to doubt God and say, Hi, God, I don't believe you can do it, ne? We all have areas of unbelief. You think about your own area of unbelief. What is it that you don't trust God for? Young ladies, I'm sure you are looking at others getting married left, right, and center, ne? Hallelujah. And, and you are just forgetting that God gave you a job. Ne? Yeah. I, I saw a clip. They argue that it's from Robert Mugabe, who said, Young men, stop going to gym for six packs. Women don't eat six packs. Go to work. <laughs> I mean, what you are saying basically there is that, is that hey, go, I mean, some of you have jobs, isn't it? The only thing you don't have is a what? A partner. Ne? <laughs> You're forgetting the job you have. You are concentrating on what you don't have. You become like the children of Israel. This is an area of unbelief that you need to work on. Ne? Yeah. Some of you have been working for all these years and things are not good now. And it's easy to question God. Ne? And say, where is God when all these things? Some of you, your businesses have been thriving for all this time. And now you are hitting a snake. You start to question God. Guess what? You forgot the cars that you bought with this business. Let us not be like those guys. My brother, God has been good to you. Amen. Has God been good to you, brother? Anna? Yeah. You, you ask for our prayers. Brothers, pray for me. My family is in Nigeria. They have to come here. Did God respond? Yeah, people wait for years for documents to be processed. Yours was processed within a year. Hallelujah. Yeah, now there are challenges. You can't find schools for your children. You start questioning God's goodness. Yeah, this is us. We are like that. Be careful that you don't be like that. And you will become like the, the children of what? Israel. My brother, you have an engineering degree. Hallelujah. Because you don't have a job, you start questioning God. Many people don't have an engineering degree, including justice. Hallelujah. Yeah. Start counting your blessings. Eh? Yeah, because it's that counting of blessings. It's that spirit of gratitude that is going to attract more from God. Thank God. He has been good to you. So he is quoting these things. And now in verse 12, he is giving us further warnings. He says, take care, brethren, that there be no one of you even having an unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. Verse 13, but encourage one another day after day, as long as it is called what? Today. Encourage each other when? Every day. As long as if we still have a day that is called what? Today. When last time? When was the last time you encouraged your brothers and sisters? Huh? When was the last time you encouraged? 
took a call and said, a phone and said, I'm going to call sister so and so. When was the last time, uh, uh, Brother Munyatse, what did you call Brother Justice? Last week, this week, ne? Yeah. It's easy to call your friends, ne? Yeah. But listen to what he say. Call each other when? Daily. As long as if it is called what? Why are we supposed to call each other? Why are we supposed to encourage each other daily? There is a reason. Let's read the reason. He says, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of what? Sin. Of sin. Brethren, did you know that sin is a liar? Did you know that sin lies to your brothers and sisters every day? What are some of the lies that sin tells you? No. You know what? If you sin, you'll behave, isn't it? Yeah, if you sleep with him, you'll behave, isn't it? You wake up miserable, hallelujah. <laughs> Has sin lied to you? Yeah. Uh, what are some of the, the lies that sin tells you? Sin tells you now, God understands, isn't it? Yeah, surely God understands. Yeah, you're going through a lot, he can see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, man, guys, hey, you are too holy for me today. Does, does sin tell you that? I mean, there is a sin that all of us think God understands in your life, ne? Yeah, there's one sin that you think, ah, man, surely God understands, ne? Yeah, I should bribe, ne? Yeah, I was late for church, I surely God understands. Call drinking yana. Can call drinking yana take me to a hell? Uh, surely, surely God what? Understands. I don't have a license. What must I do? Surely God understands. South Africa is bad. Don't we have a surely God understands moment? Eh? Yeah. But, but, but me and him love each other. Eh? Oh, we're about to get married. We've even announced to the parents. Eh? Ah, surely. <laughs> Brethren, sin is deceitful, eh? Sin is? Yeah, sin tells you, no, don't come to church. No, you can cope alone. Yeah, you can be okay alone. So the Bible says we must do what? We must encourage one another daily. Ne? As, as long as it is called what? Today. So that we might help each other from the deceitfulness of what? Of sin. Brethren, do not be irritated when the leaders of this congregation call you, ne? when you are not around on Sunday. We need to keep on calling you and don't say, what, what do they want? You must also thank God because they care about you. Maybe some of us, sin has hardened our hearts. Ne? Do you know sin can harden your heart? Yeah, you do it the first time, your, your conscience tells you, ah, this is bad. Ne? The second time, this is bad. The third time, ah, this is bad. The third time, I mean, there are some sins that we are committing. Our hearts and actually our conscience have been seized as if with a hot iron, isn't it? Yeah, there are some sins now they are normal to you, isn't it? Initially they were not normal. You were sensitive to them, but you have been desensitized as time progressed. Do you realize, brethren, the importance of, of fellowshipping with each other? Do you realize the importance of calling each other, brother, where are you? Because it can help us from the deceitfulness of what? Of sin. Uh, I don't have my, my, my watch here with me. Can I please uh, get the sense of time? It's almost. Okay. So almost does not count, ne? Yeah. But encourage one another day after day as long as it is called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of, of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. We, we need to encourage each other to finish the race. Ne? Brethren, we are in a war. This is a spiritual war. Ne? We are in a race. We need to constantly cheer each other up until the, the end. God will not be impressed with you if you give up. While it is said, today if you hear his voice, he's repeating it again. Eh? Do not 
had in your hearts as when they provoked me. For who provoked him when they had heard? Indeed, did not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he angry for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? It's very interesting how the author of the book of Hebrews constantly gives us these scary pictures. Né? He doesn't stop scaring you. He, he, stop, he, he, he always tells you, what did they do? They, they fell in the wilderness. Né? Yeah. So hey, be careful that you don't allow your heart to be hardened. Be careful that you do not what? You do not turn back. Because if you turn back, you are also going to be... You are not going to make it to the, to, to the promised land. You remember those bodies? You remember how many people died? Always think about that. You know something very interesting, brethren, about us when we read the, 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 the story of the children of Israel? It's very easy to think God will not do it to us. Ne? Yeah, uh, shame. these people were evil, eh? <laughs> yeah, Athena, we are blood bought. Eh? Then we are Christians. Ah, God surely will not do that. I like what Paul says in the book of Romans. He actually warns them if God uprooted them, what, what about us? I mean, do you know how much God loved Israel? I mean, He chose Israel. They were His chosen people. They were the first branch. Ne? Tina, we are just pest. Ne? We are a pest branch. And listen to, we think, I, they died because they were too evil. Brethren, Tina were too evil because at least for now they didn't know, they didn't see Jesus. Ne? They don't know salvation. They don't know the goodness of salvation. Yes, they saw good things that God did. But you know, we saw even more. And to whom much is given, much is expected. Be careful that you don't. You, you are not. Uh, uh, you yeah, five minutes. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient. So we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Just before I sit down, I just want to, I want us to reflect on these verses and look at them and really ask ourselves, is it possible for a Christian to fall away? Yeah. Is it possible for a preacher to fall? Yes. Uh, is it possible for a leader of the church to fall? Yes. Yeah. People think it's, uh, falling is not an option. Once saved, always yes. saved. But can you see that doctrine is flawed? Because it is possible to fall away. Let's go to verse 12 and read it again. Take care, brethren, that there not be any among you even unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. Brethren, it's possible to fall. Eh? If you think you are strong, what must you do? Think again. Think, ma. Okay, that's what we say at talk. Don't quote us, ne? And say what <laughs> telling scripture. We're saying if you think you are strong, think again. Instead, what must you do? You must pray. Brethren, it's easy to fall into unbelief, ne? Yeah, unbelief starts kind of ne? Smaller yana challenge. You, you used to be a very faithful member of the church, but smaller yana challenges as they constantly happen to you, you start doubting God, ne? Yeah, that's the aim of sin. Sin, that's the aim of the devil. devil. The devil is there to make you to question God's goodness. Né? If God is so good, why didn't he give you, why doesn't he bless you with a wife? Eh? If God is so good, why doesn't he bless you with a husband? Look, Mashuru is sorted. Look, Mulis is sorted. When uh, he keeps on whispering, né? you remember what he said to, 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 to Eve? God said to Eve, if you eat from this tree, you shall surely die. What did the serpent say? He changes one word. Ne? He says, he includes not. Ne? He says, you shall surely not die. The aim, brethren, of the enemy is to make you conscious and doubt God. And want to think that something is good outside. Please don't go outside, church. Ne? Don't go to a... Uh, Showgrounds, ne? Can I hear an amen? amen. <laughs> Don't go to showgrounds, ne? It's personal, my friend. Yeah, I want you to take it personal. That's the point. Don't go to these things that you are seeing, brethren. 
there is nothing better than our salvation. Amen? Yeah. Don't fall away. Amen? Amen. Let's take five minute break and move on. Thank <laughs> you.